Lately, a bunch of people have asked me to share some more tips and tricks up my sleeve on how to make your mocks go from zero to hero and how to add more detail. So today, I'm sharing my top three favorite techniques I use to make my mocks go from simplistic to super detailed. I will go ahead and say that this video is a follow-up to my previous tips and tricks video, so if you want to check that out, it will be linked down in the description down below. But jumping right in, and this one's kind of important, the first tip is that smaller pieces are better. I put three little wall assemblies together today to show you exactly what I'm talking about in this video a little bit easier. And the thing you'll notice about these builds is that there's no gigantic wall pieces. About the biggest brick you'll see is a profile brick that's one by two. Everything else is either a one by one plate, a one by one stud, or at least a one by one brick. There's nothing bigger than a 1x2. In fact, almost all of these pieces can fit inside of a minifig's hand. Now, a lot of people, when they build a mock, they'll just flock to big pieces to make a wall because it's easier, it's a whole lot quicker, and it's just, it saves time. But the problem with that is you're not getting enough detail in the build. Now, LEGO actually does a great job of making gigantic wall panel pieces. There's 1x2x5s, 1x5x6s. There's a lot of wall panels out there, but I can guarantee none of them have the detail you're looking for. As you can see with these wall assemblies, none of these builds have gigantic wall panel pieces. In fact, this assembly right here uses nothing but cheese wedges, a couple one by ones and some tiles, yet it takes up a bigger space than a wall panel piece. It will take longer to put together, but the detail in this wall assembly is far superior to anything Lego will give you in one piece. In fact, you could even make something of this size with only a couple pieces and it still won't have the level of detail that this one will have. And the philosophy behind it is pretty simple. The smaller the piece, the more pieces you can put into a smaller space. So the more pieces you have, the more detail you have, because Lego does not make a seamless connection. You can obviously see a line between the pieces, which adds some texture and some much added detail. So the smaller the piece you have, the more detail it's gonna provide. If you stack cheese wedges together, you're getting a bunch of lines and you can see the angles the cheese wedges make with each other. That's something you won't even get with one by two bricks or one by four bricks. It's something that only comes with using the smallest pieces and the angled pieces that have interesting lines that really draw your eye to them. And in fact, using small pieces actually segues into my next tip, which is choose part parts with more detail. Now a lot of these tips do sound pretty obvious, but a bunch of people just don't even use them. So when I say use parts with more detail, what I mean by this is to pick a part that has more texturing on it. It's pretty simplistic. When you choose a 1x2 brick, for example, don't go for the normal 1x2 brick that comes in a classic creator set. You need to go something for a profile brick or a masonry brick or something that has more texturing on it. For example, take this castle wall I make right here and look at the only 1x2 bricks you see in it. The only 1x2 bricks are masonry bricks. I don't even use profile bricks in this because I feel like the masonry bricks have the most texturing and the most detail on them. This tip actually links back to the first tip because masonry bricks like this, they look like they're made of four different pieces because of the way the lines are between them. So even though it's a big piece, it looks small because it has more detail and you're getting the smaller lines and the smaller piece look without actually using smaller pieces. So when you're making a mock and you need something to look detailed, I would not flock to the simplistic pieces that are plentiful in quantity. Go for something smaller and go for something that has a little bit more detail. Profile bricks with grooves, the log pieces, barrels, masonry bricks, all these pieces have different little grooves in them that add more detail and texture. Now it's important to add variation. You don't want to overuse these pieces because you want it to look randomized and you want to add detail. The more of it you add in one spot, the less it looks detailed because it all just blends together. So don't go overboard with it. Exposing studs is a very good way to make sure you have texture. That's what I did here with headlight bricks. This way you have a stud that's exposed with a little bit of texture added by the Lego logo that's printed on top. Even though the logo is small, you still see it and your brain will still process it. Just remember, don't go overboard and don't use too much in one area. My final tip for you today is also extremely important for achieving different techniques. It is illegal, but I think if you're here by now, you don't really care and you'll know that building illegal is not a bad thing. So my final tip is friction is your friend. So please, please use friction. It's only physics, but it makes all the difference. Lego has a great way of actually holding pieces in place with friction that doesn't actually stress the parts or actually make them fall out of place or bend certain pieces. It's a great system. To show you what I mean, this castle wall right here is using a bunch of bricks that are put on their side. And you'll see a lot of them are cheese wedges. A lot of them are one by ones, but they're actually held in with 
with panel pieces. None of them are connected to each other. If you tried to make a brick wall with grooves in between the bricks as small as these, you probably would not be able to do it to the effect that this wall can. You see, the panel pieces and the cheese wedges pieces actually add a small tan groove between the bricks that you can't achieve with a plate because it's just too thick. But the beauty of the panel piece is that it's actually a half plate thick on the panel part. So if you stack them up on headlight bricks, you actually get a one by one gap between the panels that you can slide bricks in and the friction will hold them in place. So once I figured that out, all I did was put some cheese wedges, some one by ones, and a bunch of smaller pieces going back to tip one, and you see a bunch of different textured bricks here. You could even rotate this down and make it a floor. This technique applies in a bunch of different ways. There's a whole lot of ways that you could actually use friction and just rest pieces in place, and the friction will do the work in holding them there. I encourage you to experiment, and if you want to see some more tips, I will leave them linked down below, but let me know down in the comments below what you want to see, but as always, thank you so much for watching, and most importantly, take care.